What's up guys, Midnight Maker here, and today I will be showing you guys how you can turn a raw 3D print into a fully finished Star-Lord Blaster from Guardians of the Galaxy. So starting off here, as you guys can see, I am just sanding the 3D print, giving it a pretty heavy scuff with 80 grit sandpaper. Uh, this just knocks down most of the layer lines and gets it ready for filler primer. So here is me with the Duplicolor Filler Primer. I love this filler primer. I think it's really good. Um, it's a lot better than the Rust-Oleum one, which I know most people have used in the past. But yeah, just putting on a fairly heavy coat of this stuff. Don't worry about paint runs because it's going to get sanded again. Normally what I do is I do a passive 80 grit sandpaper and then a coat of filler primer, then a passive 220 grit sandpaper, then another coat of filler primer, and then wet sanding with 600 grit. Uh, sandpaper. So here's the print after um, 220 grit sandpaper plus uh, filler primer. It's just orange because that's the other color filler primer I had. So this step here is wet sanding. So uh, you can either you know spray water on or you can fill up sort of a, a tub full of water. This just wastes a little bit less water so I prefer doing this. Um, but I think I have 600 grit sandpaper there. You basically just go over it to get it extra smooth. You may notice on the bottom side as well, it's a lot less rough. I just kind of used a Dremel on that as well to make it nice and smooth. So yeah, and you kind of just <laughs> rinse and repeat, you know, you spray water on it, sand it. If sort of it, it starts to get a little dry, then you can spray more water on and there you go. So here is the blaster after a coat of black. I think I used airbrush on this, but you can use black spray paint. I just like using black as a base because even though most of the gun gets covered up, it's good to you know start from that. So this step here is going to be the metal portions of the gun. So you could obviously paint this on, um, but I'm using a method that was used by Adam Savage in his build of the Star-Lord Blasters where he used aluminum tape to uh, cover the metal sections. And this is a really cool technique because it gets you a very nice shine. And so, yeah, uh, to start off, you use your aluminum tape and kind of just arbitrarily mark out where you're going to put it. Um, so, yeah. And when uh, removing the tape from the backing, um, make sure that you try not to let it curl in on itself because that will cause wrinkles. You'll see here I make a mistake and it does wrinkle, but it, it's okay uh, because of the next step here, which is the burnishing step where you use basically just a little tool. Um, this is kind of like a, it's like a little rubber, almost like spatula type thing that I'm using, but you can use like a wooden, even like a popsicle stick would probably work. Uh, but yeah, and you basically start revealing the shape and sorry that the light's a bit flickery here. Um, <laughs> that's just how reflective that sort of the metal tape is, the aluminum tape. So yeah, and you basically just reveal all the shapes so that when you go and uh, cut it with the X-Acto blade here, then uh, you have a nice guideline for where you need to cut it. So there we go. And you kind of just score it and then you can peel off the excess tape. I find it quite useful to use a pair of uh, tweezers to sort of remove that, especially since you can get in those grooves. As you can see, the tape is actually quite fragile, so it does rip occasionally, but uh, there you go. You can see that's a nice clean line, and uh, yeah. And so then it's kind of just a rinse and repeat from there. Um, you kind of just reveal the shape, um, and uh, the more you reveal the shape, the easier it'll be to uh, cut it because you'll have a really nice guideline for where your blade is supposed to go. So yeah, you'll see, I'm just kind of, and the more you sort of uh, burnish those lines, the crisper they'll get, uh, and then it'll look, you know, more professional. So you can see, I'm just scoring the lines here. It's a very repetitive process, so I won't show you guys too much of this.
So once you've scored and removed all the tape, you can go back and kind of, yeah, just really sort of make those edges crisp, press them down. But yeah, so there it is. You see, that looks pretty good. It's nice, it looks metallic, and uh, yeah, it's already looking very, very, you know, professional and, you know, just, just crisp. So here I'm just cutting out the little details. Make sure you don't miss out on these because it just adds an extra bit of, you know, like it just looks really clean when you remove the, the metal tape from those grooves. So definitely don't forget that. See that? Oh, it looks so good. And there's the bottom side all done. Around the curves, you do have to be careful and it takes a lot of trial and error, but you basically kind of cut triangles almost to sort of make it so that it's flat and you can kind of hide the seams by just making sure everything's cut really precisely, I guess. So yeah, there's the bottom detail cut out. You can see, you can kind of use your finger to actually to, you know, make those lines crisper if you need to. Cause sometimes it's hard to get the little tool that you're using in there. And here's just a little more footage of the aluminum tape. So uh, once you're done that, I won't show you guys any more of the aluminum tape process because it gets very repetitive. Um, you can either hand paint or you can mask off the gun. I, I prefer hand painting in this step because it's just, they're pretty small details. So it'd be kind of hard to get an airbrush or, or spray paint in there. You'd have to do a lot of masking. But yeah, so there you go. Just kind of paint on the gold details. Look at your reference images to make sure you're painting all the right details, the right color. Um, yeah, those two bigger cylinders are gold and then the little ones in there are actually silver. And as you can see, it's already coming together. Here's some more footage of the gun itself after it's been hand painted. Uh, I also did a bit of weathering there with a little bit of the silver dry brush just to make it look a bit scuffed up. So we are now mostly done. Uh, the two steps left are basically the carbon fiber uh, wrap on the handle, as well as I will do a little airbrush tutorial here. And so basically I use these two paints, Liquitex Red and Model Air Blue. And uh, the key to airbrushing the gun here is, I mean, it's basically burn marks. So you want to you, you want to be really far away from your piece. Not really far, but you want to be pretty far back just so that you don't make any sort of splotches. You just barely want to dust it on there. Plus, if you just do a very light coat, it retains some of that metallic look. So actually the paint itself shines a bit, which is really cool. And it looks, it looks super realistic. So yeah, I'll just speed through this a bit. It's, you know, it's pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. You basically just stay back a bit from your piece and just lightly sort of dust it and get some kind of streak mark looking things. And yeah, you'll be good to go. So once you're done with the blue, then you'll want to go uh, and add some red to your blue paint. So the, you can allow the red to mix a bit with the blue paint that's in your airbrush. It's not super exact. Also, um, the red will just already sort of mix with the blue that's already on the gun, on the blaster. Um, and yeah, it'll make a really nice purple shade. Uh, make sure you look at your references. I actually ended up redoing this. Um, it can be wiped off if you use either water or, or rubbing alcohol, depending on what paints you use. But yeah, I ended up redoing this, even though it does look quite good here. But I just wanted it to be more purple near the, the sort of opening of the barrel and then more blue near sort of the handle. So yeah, I mean, there you go. That's pretty much all there is to it. Um, yeah, just keep adding, you know, as much as you think looks good. I think that looks really cool. I think that looks, yeah looks awesome yeah i think i added just a bit too much purple to the sort of uh you know behind the blue where i should have just left that area blue but yeah it still looks pretty good here though so you know it's all up to you 
it's not perfect it's not a perfect representation of the one from volume two it's actually a lot similar to how it looks in volume one um but yeah just do what you think looks good or do it what's accurate you know it's it's all up to you know it's your prop so do what you want with it you know And finally, for the last step here, we have the carbon fiber. So this is a carbon fiber vinyl. I think I got this one on Amazon. I don't remember. I've had this for a very long time. Um, but yeah, it's just a carbon fiber uh, vinyl wrap. So uh, all you'll need for this is a blow dryer or heat gun. And uh, of course, your gun and the vinyl wrap. So uh, yeah. Just start by uh, marking out the area. So kind of just get a rough estimate, kind of feel the shapes even, or you can measure it. Uh, I kind of just eyeballed it. Um, yeah, cut out a bit of carbon fiber. You're going to do a lot of trimming with an X-Acto blade. So don't worry if it, you know, you cut a little bit too much because it's gonna get trimmed. So yeah, so there we go. I'm just making sure I cut the right size and I think that looks pretty good. So here we go peel off the backing and you can kind of just stick it down wherever you like yeah and so this is pretty straightforward um, it's a very similar technique to the aluminum tape uh, wrap on the blaster um, you kind of just want to reveal the shape so you just kind of start yeah you kind of lay it down um, and then, yeah, you kind of just start pressing along it to sort of check where your edges are. So, you know, the reason we do this is because then when you bring in the X-Acto blade, then it is, um, you know, it, it's a lot easier to cut and you won't cut too much. So, yeah, uh, basically, once you have that laid down, you can start using the heat gun. That will also help reveal the shape because the heat gun does a great job at sort of, it just, it doesn't really melt it, but it makes it soft. So it kind of wants to wrap around the shape. So yeah, I'm kind of just pressing it down. You can see there's a, there's wrinkles, but uh, the wrinkles can actually be smoothed out later. I'm just trying to get the shape of the handle. And I kind of, uh, I kind of cut an X shape through the gaps because then you can kind of fold it up. You can fold it into that sort of grip section and then it looks really sort of nice and clean. Uh, the grip section in there may be missing a little bit. You can go back and lay an extra strip of carbon fiber down on the inside if you want. I kind of just left mine. Um, they do also get partially covered when you do the other side as well. So yeah, and it's kind of just you cut, you try and fit it to like as tightly as possible to that inside, cut along your edges. You know, yeah, it's very similar to how the uh, chrome section worked with the aluminum tape. So, yeah, I'm just kind of uh, folding those triangles that I cut into the grip section. So again, heating it up. Uh, this is where you can kind of remove some of those wrinkles. So I'm just heating it up. Sorry, I move it a little bit off camera. Um, yeah, I'm just kind of, uh, you know, just, it is hard because you're wrapping vinyl and the vinyl, it, it, you know, it stretches a little bit, but it's not enough to conform fully to the shape of the gun. The gun is a very, you know, Starler's blasters have a very unique shape to them. Um, so yeah. It, it can get kind of difficult at times to make the vinyl sort of want to go around the shape of the handle. Uh, but, you know, it's not perfect. You know, hydro dipping is the accurate method of doing this. I had the vinyl lying around, so I figured I'd give it a shot and I think it came out pretty good. But yeah, it's just a lot. It's, it's very finicky, so. If you're going to do this method, <laughs> prepare to spend, you know, like 30, 40 minutes on, on the handle, on 
for each, which isn't a long time, but it's just, yeah, it's a very, very tedious project sometimes. But it's worth it, you know, it, it adds a lot of accuracy to your guns. This is how they looked in, in all three movies, really. And yeah, you'll see I'm kind of trimming a bit more. Um, a lot of the, the area does get covered up by the sheet on the other side, which is what you do. You do one sheet per side. Um, yeah. So there we go. That is that side finished. And you basically just do the exact same thing on the other side. It's it's pretty straightforward. It just can be a bit tedious at times. But yeah, so there you go. It looks pretty good. There's a, I think there's a little spot missing there. And you can just fill that in or you can redo it. You know, it doesn't use a ton of vinyl, which is nice. So if you want to redo the, the handle, you definitely can. Thank you so much for watching this video and uh, like and subscribe if you enjoyed.